Namaste. Now let's take a look at the deep meanings in the second verse. The second verse begins with ma, mandakini. Huh? Remember, each verse begins with the letter in the mantra. So, na, ma, is the second verse. So, mandakini salila means unto him who is worshipped with water from the Mandakini River. The Mandakini River is not on this earth planet. It's in the heavenly planets. It's beyond. So this river is extremely pure. It's extremely uh, full of life and wonderful. And its effects are healing. So Shiva is worshipped with water from this river, the river of life, the water of life. Huh? The Brazilians have a saying, Agua de Beber. Agua de Beber means the water of life. And the water of life, of course, is consciousness and energy. Prana. So this water of life is flowing in all of us in the subtle areas. And so this is the actual uh, substance which is used to worship Shiva, not just a, a physical offering, but an offering of one's own life energy, one's own consciousness. That is pleasing to Shiva. Chandana Charchitaya, unto him who is smeared with sandalwood paste. Shiva loves sandalwood paste. <laughs> it's very rare, especially nowadays with climate change and cutting of forests. A sandalwood has become extremely precious, both the wood and the oils, the fragrant oils extracted from it. Why is that? Because they're very cooling, not only fragrant and beautiful, but physically cooling as well. And so, as we pointed out last time, Shiva loves anything cool, cooling. So, he loves camphor, he loves sandalwood paste, he loves certain flowers that have a cooling effect. That's the nature of Shiva. Now, Nand Ishwara. Nand Ishwara is Shiva's bull. And of course, like all the animals in the spiritual world, he's not just an ordinary dumb animal. He's enlightened. He's intelligent. He has mystic powers. He's very powerful, Nandishwara. And even in Shiva Purana, he is the speaker of many chapters. So you should go and check that out. Nandishwara instructs Narda. He instructs even Vyasa, what to speak of Sutta, Vyasa's disciple. So, all of them go to Nandishwara to learn intimate details about Shiva. Shiva is very hard to know. One has to approach someone who knows him intimately. Then only you can hear about the wonders of Shiva. Next, Pramatanat, unto the Lord of ghosts and goblins. Now, what is this? Why is Shiva always surrounded by ghosts and goblins? Well, because two things. He accepts anyone who approaches him with love and service. And the second is, he does not discriminate. See, Vishnu and his followers are very much addicted to the mode of goodness, a sattva guna. And sattva guna means cleanliness, truth, purity, religiousness, and so on. So they like this because they know, they have confidence that it leads toward liberation. And it does. But it's very slow. <laughs> if you also draw on the powers of passion and ignorance, you can make much quicker progress, but you have to know what you're doing because there's some danger. 
it's not so certain like the mode of goodness. So anyway, Shiva accepts anyone, even demons, ghosts, goblins, what have you, any kind of beings. Now, what are ghosts and goblins? They're beings who don't possess a gross body, an anamaya kosha. But they have the other four bodies, the pranamaya kosha, manamaya kosha, vijnanamaya kosha, and anandamaya kosha. So they have everything, all the qualifications, the structural qualifications for enlightenment. They just have to be properly engaged. So when they approach Shiva, of course, Shiva engages them in his service. They become Shiva ganas, and in that way, they can be saved. That's how merciful, that's how compassionate Shiva is. Maheshwaraya, we went over in the last video. Mandara Pushpa. Pushpa means flower, and Mandara is a certain kind of flower that grows on Mount Mandara. So, again, Mount Mandara is not in this gross physical world. It's in the heavenly worlds, a subtle world. And so these flowers are extremely beautiful, fragrant, and magical in their effects. And Bahu Pushpa, and lots and lots of other flowers. In fact, there's a whole section in Shiva Purana that talks about the different kind of flowers that are used to worship Shiva and their effects of different kinds and quantities of flowers. Basically, uh, Shiva accepts almost any kind of flower except Nandiki. <laughs> yes, the thing about Nandiki, because Brahma convinced the Nandiki flower to lie for him. <laughs> so back in the beginning of the universe, any other flower is fine with Shiva. And the more the better. The more flowers you offer Shiva, the more he will respond and reciprocate. So Pojitaya means not just worship, puja, but su puja, the highest standard of worship, the most exalted worship, the most powerful, beautiful, and continuous Su also means continuous worship. So worship of Shiva is continuous, and it's on a very high level of purity and consciousness. Why? Because that's where Shiva is. So as soon as you go into Shiva yoga, connecting with Shiva through puja, through mantra, through any kind of service, even by hearing about him, then you immediately are raised to that platform. So one should try to maximize one's worship of Shiva. That's what Supujita really means. And Supujitaya means unto him who is always constantly worshipped at a very high level of purity. And then the last line, Tasmai Makaraya Nama Shivaya. Uh, makaraya, therefore Tasmai Makaraya. The syllable ma is representing Shiva, or he has become or entered into that syllable. Nama Shivaya, obeisances, respects, and love to our most beautiful, auspicious Lord Shiva. <laughs>